Hi guys, welcome to The Training Barn. It's Emily Hancock here. I'm so delighted to see so many of you on the webinar tonight. I just want to do a quick sound check. Um, if you guys can hear me, can you just tap yes into the chat box? Um, I just want to make sure that, that everyone is receiving... Okay, great. Looks like everyone can hear me. Fantastic. So uh, I'm really, I'm just looking at um, all you guys that have attended and I'm so happy to see you. Thank you, Pippa, William, Derek, Georgina, um, Andrew, Barbara, Ben. Hi guys, it's so nice to have you here tonight. It's lovely to see so many people that I already know. Hi Flo, <laughs> yay. Um, and Jilly, thanks guys. Can you guys um, tap in where, where you're from this evening? Where, whereabouts are you guys in the country? Barbados, wow, Tony. <laughs> I feel uh, uh, very lucky to have you here tonight then, all, all the way from Barbados, amazing. Um, I know uh, Canada, hi, wow. Cornwall, lovely. Sorry, Ken, guys, amazing. Um, so it looks like uh, we are pretty close to seven o'clock now. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, we have got a ton of content to get through tonight. Um, so I'm just going to right, move that over over there lovely okay so like i said it's emily here i'm delighted to see you guys um we've got a really exciting webinar tonight it's seven steps to build your luxury equine photography business and attract high-end clients now you guys are going to have loads of questions and i've got some time left at the end to make sure that i answer as many questions as i possibly can so if you have any um burning questions through the webinar just type them into the chat box and i've got hannah uh my uh sidekick uh associate trainer online with us tonight and she's going to keep a, a track of all the questions and then at the end she's going to let me know what you guys will want to hear about so um we shall get started and i want you guys now to zone in okay this um this webinar has got so much content packed into it there's some really really wide big concepts and ideas that i want you to take on board and you're going to need to think about i want you to shut any doors shut yourself in a room a quiet room turn your phone off grab a pen and paper and you know really concentrate uh you if you can really spend some time during this next hour and i promise i will try and keep it to the hour but i know what i'm like i can talk and i can talk about this subject for days and weeks and years so um but i will do my best to keep to the hour because i know everyone uh, has other things to do, but you know, really try and make a concerted effort to note as much down as you can as possible because um, there is huge amounts of content in here and lots and lots of actionable points that you can tomorrow uh, start applying to your business. So um, I just wanted to confirm you guys are in the right place if you know you're you feel like you have the potential to be a high-end photographer um maybe you feel confused or frustrated there's so much information out there so many things that people say you've got to do this you've got to do that you know make sure you're doing this and it can be really confusing but um you know if you're not sure quite where you need to start, this is going to lay it out for you so that you know exactly all the things you need to tick off your to-do list to really start making strides towards to getting those high-end clients. And you're definitely in the right place if you know that you're ready for the next step. If you've got that belief in yourself that you can really um, step up a notch in your business, then you're absolutely in the right place.
So I just wanted to give you the heads up as well. 95% um, of this webinar is absolutely pure gold content and it's actionable stuff that you can get on straight away within your business. But the last five minutes, I am going to tell you about a year long mentorship program, a course that's starting at the end of March. And I just want to tell you a bit about it because if you are ready to make that leap, then you might be interested. But I promise you 95% of this webinar is absolutely actionable gold content. So um, stick with me and I will tell you a little bit about that at the end and then we will go into our Q&A session. So you can ask me anything you want, as silly as it, you might think it is or if you think I might not know that, just ask every question you have and I will do my best to answer them. So um, for those guys who don't know me, um, I live in the New Forest. I've got two gorgeous children um, and a husband and I've always been a horsey girl. I, you know, I've, I've grown up around horses and uh, I love the outdoor lifestyle. I've got a beautiful little studio that I work in. Um, but, you know, over the years, I've, I've been a photographer for over 15 years now. And I have to say, there have been many ups and downs. And I, you know, I, I've got this wonderful support network and this family that have supported me through all those ups and downs. And, you know, I kind of laugh about it now, but probably every six months or so I, I used to have a complete meltdown and I'd go to my family and and be like oh I need to get a normal job I just I just want to go for a nine to five I want to go to work come back and you know get paid at the end of the month and that be it and and they'd humor me for maybe 24 hours 48 hours while I had this minor meltdown down and then um they'd say also oh, have you started looking for jobs like and I would say to them, um, well, actually, I think I'm going to stick with being a photographer. I, you know, I Hi, just. Emily, don't... sorry to interrupt you. It's Hannah here. Can you Hi. just share your screen? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might help. Uh, Thank you. There we go. Hi, everyone. Can you see my screen now? <laughs> Yay! Fantastic. We can see all Emily's beautiful images. Perfect. Oh, Thanks. sorry, guys. Epic fail from a, <laughs> a non-techie person here. Anyway, hopefully you can all see my screen now. So these are my beautiful children. And, and what I was saying was basically over the last 15 years, there's been many ups and downs. And some days I just haven't wanted to be a photographer and then give it 24 hours there's no way I'm quitting I'm going to push forward and keep going because I've got this vision so um I uh, my business is comprised of sort of three different areas I have got equine commissions which I do less of nowadays I have done them for 15 years and and they were the basis of my business. Um, but since having a family, having children, I have uh, started to create my own fine art and producing images that I now sell globally, both to commercial collectors and private collectors. And that probably takes up most of my time now. Um, but I still do equine commissions, but they're very hand-picked for the, you know, the clients that, that I want to work with. And then I obviously have the training barn where I do this and I train photographers to make successful businesses and really get ahead with their photography and, and make profitable businesses. So, um, I just so you guys know you're not talking or listening to some crazy lady out there that that doesn't have a clue about anything I just wanted to let you guys know you know you can look um, me up on the internet and on my website and I've got a fellowship with the BIPP which I'm very proud of um, I, I achieved that a few years ago I've had hundreds of published articles again on my website you can see that I am a assessor for the BIPP, so I do assess uh, uh, both with the qualifications and the awards. Um, and one thing I'm particularly proud of, and you know, to some of you, you may think, well, that doesn't sound a lot, but I've got a really strong, solid list of clients and 
um, I've got 5,000 people who are on my list and, and they follow my work and, and they love my work. And over the years, I've worked with them a lot. And, you know, I know there's many people, uh, you know, online marketing and stuff where they're talking about lists of 50,000 people, 100,000 people. And for me, having a, a smaller list, but a very much more concentrated, warm list, as as we'd call it, you know, is, is more vital. So even if, you know, you have 100 people on your list, and that's it, you should treat them like they're gold. And and so I'm very proud of, of my followers and, and my list. And on top of that, I do have a team of eight different people who work on my business. And, you know, these guys aren't employed with me, but they're all freelancers and I bring them in to do various pieces for me uh, depending on on what the job is what the task is what I need doing that some are tech support some are marketing some are social media and um you know so I've built this business um to to a point where I'm super super proud of it and you know, I hopefully tonight and you guys, I know lots of you guys know me and, and you've heard me speak before. And I'm so grateful that you guys are coming back to listen to me again because um, I must be saying something good. So um, I, I'm just really proud uh, of my business and, and I want to help inspire other people. So um, we'll crack on, you know, the big picture. What is it? What What is the big picture? Well, you know, you want to be the best photographer you can be. I, I'm sure you're all s sat there and you know you've got potential within you. But on top of that, you want financial security in your business. And that's really important to you. Um, so over time, I kind of worked out that that this is both an art and a science. Um, you've got the art side, which is the creative bit, and then you've got the sciencey bit, which is the business side. And you need to be able to balance both of these. You know, um, you 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 need to um, pay as much attention to the art as the science. If you if you're lacking in one side, then it's going to be obvious in your business. And we all know. Um, you know, that clients who are spending 100 quid with us, that's not helping us pay a mortgage. You know, we need to be on top of this. We need to both have this amazing creative side and this bu business side that we nurture and we really focus in on what we want to achieve from our businesses. And so, you know, over time, you need to really... Uh, focus on on that goal and make sure that you're seeing the big picture and you understand what the big picture is but I know you guys all sitting out there know that you can do it know that you've got the potential and you might just need a little bit of guidance which is awesome because if you can take that guidance and help and then put those steps into action then you're halfway there if not more so I'm going to tell you tonight what we're going to learn. Like I said, that there is an absolute ton of content in here, and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to squeeze it into the hour, but I promise I'll talk as fast as I possibly can to make sure you guys uh, can, can get as much as you can. But I would say that you are going to get loads of actionable content. Um, so tomorrow morning, you can start um, making pr progress with your business. So, um, we're going to talk about the business basics, you know, the foundations, what you need to absolutely secure before you start building upwards. We're going to talk about attracting the right high-end clients. Now, not every horsey person is your client. There's a common misconception that anyone who owns a horse is the right client. Well, that's not true, and we're going to talk about that. Presentation mindset and growth. This is a huge one and people forget these bits, okay? So I want you guys to take notes around this because they're very, very subtle points, but they are absolutely so important that you get this right, excuse me, this right. The, oh, creating seamless systems. So um, this is all about making sure that uh, your business 
is really easy for you to run and easy for your client to to go through. Um, once they're a client, it needs to be um, simple for them. It, it needs to be a luxury um, experience for them. And we're going to talk about that. So the shoot, we're going to talk about how you go that extra mile, how you make it that little bit extra special. And the sale, many photographers, they get stuck here. They leave money on the table. They get scared. They're not sure, um, you know, what what to do. They they panic and, and then they, they leave um, money on the table effectively. And so we're going to talk a bit about that as well. And the extra mile, going the extra mile. How do you make these clients feel special? You know, high-end clients are used to dealing with high-end brands that make them feel loved, that make them feel cared for. And so how are you going to do that? You can't be average. If you want to deal with high-end clients, no, you cannot be on, on the average scale. It just won't work. So I wanted to put this shot in here. And I know there's one lady that will recognize this photo that's listening tonight. But um, this was kind of my aha moment, if you like. And I remember standing here. I was maybe 19 years old, something like that. And uh, I was shadowing a photographer and I was amongst all these guys and we were photographing the Royals playing polo. And at that moment, I realized that actually I didn't want to get the same as everyone else. I wanted to be different. I wanted to stand out. I didn't feel like this was, um, this didn't give me enough, enough creative freedom. I, I certainly knew that equine and photography were 100% the way I was going to go. Um, but, you know, I wasn't prepared to do what everyone else was doing. I wanted to stand out. And so um, I always, <laughs> I like to read this quote quite often, actually, because I think it reminds me always just to keep moving and to never stay still. If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always got. And Henry Ford apparently said this, but on the internet, actually, it says there's a few other people that also said it. So, you know, whoever said it, it's, it's a great quote. I love it. You know, I'm very ambitious and I'm always inspired but I always remember that I need to keep moving forward and change things. If I want something to change, I have to do something about it. So um, without further ado, we're going to get right stuck in and uh, get on with the business basics. So you need to get it right from the start. And I always want you to think as we're going through this, is that I'm talking about high-end clients, okay? So everything has to be perfect. There cannot be one broken chink in the chain. It has to be seamless, the whole thing, because you need to build trust with these clients. They need to believe in you. They need to believe that what they're buying into is um, a luxury product. And so... It is absolutely essential, and and you'll know you'll see as we go through. There is a lot in here. There is a lot, and you're going to need to break it down. You're going to need to spend time tomorrow or the following week or whenever you can to really ask yourself a lot of questions. So goals and targets, and you guys that have trained with me before, you will know I bang on about this all the time. It is absolutely essential that you know what your business goals are, what your financial goals are, and what your personal goals are. You need to ask yourself the questions, what do I want to achieve? What does my business look like now? And what does my business look like in five years? How much money do I have now? And how much do I want my business to generate? You know, you need to write these questions down, you need to answer them. 
You need to be honest with yourself and you need to keep updating these goals. You need to really take them seriously. And like I say, I do them at the start of every year. And then I probably sometimes do them every six months. And then I probably sometimes do them every month. Because as things move and change, my goals can shift slightly. I mean, I'll still have a big picture goal. I want to be the best photographer on the planet or, you know, whatever it is. And I have to reassess my goals all the time. So don't underestimate this step. You've got to do it. OK, then, um, you know, you need to get the essentials in line. Some of you guys will already have this if you're full time working photographers. Others may just be coming up to it. But um, things like insurance, when you are dealing, I mean, whoever you're dealing with, but when you are dealing with high end clients, be under no illusion. I have photographed horses that are worth more than a million pounds and I need to be insured insured properly <laughs> so that if anything goes wrong i am covered you know my kit insurance my professional indemnity insurance make sure that's all sorted business registration you know if you're going to be serious here about your business it's got to be registered you need a business bank account you definitely need a piece of financial software to keep track of all your money and what's happening. You know, finances are so important. And trust me, I've worked <laughs> over the last 15 years. I, I kind of laugh at myself because way back when, you know, I didn't really have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I was making money and spending money as fast as I was making it. I was buying all the new shiny lenses that I never used after the first test I did with them, you know, bought a new computer every two years. And I just went on and on. But finance is a huge budgeting. You need to know how much you have, how much you want to make and how much you can spend um, because you need to know, you know, how you can um create the highest impact with your money that you do have so make sure you get those essentials sorted out first kit and computers like i said goodness you need to start slow on this um i have bought so much shiny kit i mean i i i can't imagine how much money i could have saved had i not uh, decided i wanted a fisheye lens i wanted a 600 mil lens i wanted everything in between i wanted all the fancy software and i wanted the computers and you know all this stuff well basically i use one camera and one lens and have done for 15 years despite all the other bits of kit i do have um so i would say start slow use what you have and then invest wisely prioritize what really matters because actually for high-end clients, they don't care whether you've got three lenses or 10 lenses. You know, they don't care what camera you're shooting on because actually it's not about that for them. It's about the experience. It's about the luxury. It's about knowing that the photographer's producing amazing images. They don't actually care whether you've got a nice camera or not. So be really cautious and just invest wisely. I put schedule here because I know some of you guys online tonight are in a similar position with me, a couple of kids running around the ankles. And, um, you know, I've gone from before children being able to work six days a week, as many hours I, as I like to realistically working probably 15 hours a week. Um, but I have to say that when I had my first um child Barnaby I decided that I didn't actually I wanted to work less yes but I didn't want to lose my income so I needed to become super efficient with my time um, so what I'm saying is that if you only have 10 hours a week to spend on your photography business that is absolutely fine 
But what you need to make sure is that those 10 hours a week are fully loaded, super efficient hours. That means that you can make huge progress without doing all the surfing online, procrastinating, you know, kind of doing a bit of this, a bit of that. You know, you just have to make sure, understand what time you can dedicate to your photography, get a really decent calendar, and then know your priorities. So dropping the kids at school, picking them up for me is a priority. So that's non-negotiable. I don't work those hours. I want to go to the ballet performance. I want to go to parents evening, whatever it is, they're non-negotiable. So I don't work those hours and that's fine because that suits me. But so make sure you really knuckle down, understand what time you have to dedicate to your photography, and then you're able to schedule your hours efficiently. Now, I hope you guys have got um, your notepads out because for some of you guys, I'm hoping you've got this because I know you know about the circle of love, but it is absolutely imperative that you have this. You need to create it, you need to use it, and you need to worship it. Grab a massive A3 pad, draw a big circle, and put in the center who you can absolutely 100% guarantee is going to um uh sorry is going to recommend you as a photographer right and mine started off originally with my mum my dad my brothers and my sisters and that was it right that was the only people i could 100% guarantee if anyone asked them who would you use as a photographer they would say me now over time of course there have been people on the outside of my circle that I have wanted to bring onto the inside. And I've worked hard to get those people in. And now there's a nice full circle of people who I can guarantee, even if they come across other photographers, they are 100% behind me. And you guys need to create this, you need to work on it, and you need to nurture those people inside your circle, and you need to work out how you can get the people on the outside of your circle. Now, just a heads up, that might be an influential horse rider. It might be um, a, an equestrian brand. It could be anyone, right? It could be a vet, it could be a physio, it could be whoever you wanted it to be that was on the outside of the circle and you've got to work out how you can get them in. So then I just wanted to touch on development. Is uh, uh, One of the things I, uh, and you guys will know this, I always am looking at how I move my business forward. How will it look in one year? I never want to stand still. My career, personally, what do I? what's the next level for me? Where do I need to go? Because if you start to stand still, then you'll become stale. And then things will move on faster and past you. And, and then you'll lose track of where you're going and what you're doing and you'll feel like you've lost momentum. So it's really important to stay on top of your development. And definitely as well, um, you know, I always keep in touch with a lot of photographers because they're an amazing springboard for ideas. You know, we I network and I've got a, a very close group of photographers that we hang out and we talk about business and enjoy each other's company. But, you know, it's amazing for development to really um, brainstorm ideas and, and get together and, and bounce off each other. So um, we've got goals and targets. You've set them. You've got your business essentials in line. You've got your finances sorted. You've got your kit and computers. You've got your circle of love and you've got your development. Okay. So I love this dream, plan, do. I love dreaming. I love planning. And the doing bit's all right, I suppose. It's usually the hard work, you know, it's the bit that takes the effort. And, and I know there are lots of people out there who do the dreaming bit and they do the planning bit, but they never get around to the doing bit. And so, you know, the doing bit is what makes us move forward and, and really get get moving and going places and, and succeeding at stuff. So let's talk about marketing to your target market. Once you've got the foundation set, 
how are we going to reach the clients we want okay so let's think about this i mean i'd be interested to know do you guys know exactly what your target market is do you know what that looks like so you need to work out who they are because until you've done that you can't actually target them so i would recommend that you create three profiles profiles of people that you want to target as an example i might create a profile just an a4 bit of paper of a 16 year old girl for example who owns a pony and her name is i don't know alice um she's got a brother mum and dad she goes to private school she reads horse and hound uh she enjoys all sports swimming sailing but she maybe she's got two ponies maybe she competes um you know where does she hang out what does she do and you create this profile of of this person that you think is your target market so that's profile one profile two might be your glamorous 45 year old plus lady um and she has got grown-up children she's maybe got one horse that she spends all her time with maybe she's a lady that lunches and um you know she plays tennis at the local tennis club what does she read i don't know tatler vogue i'm not sure so you know um and, and write down this profile and and you know print a picture off of someone from the internet that looks like you think would be your target market maybe a third one might be a commercial brand so you know equestrian brand a high-end brand and you want to create these and stick them next to your computer because the important thing is once you understand exactly who those people are who you are trying to target then your marketing can be directed straight at them so now when i was writing this presentation i mean i know i do a lot of marketing within my business and i know all the different strands and everything that i do but i thought oh i'd just be interested to google um mark how many different areas of marketing there are and so i literally put that into google and it came up with 53 different types of marketing. I was slightly blown away. I mean, I knew there were a lot, but some of them were crazy. Anyway, you know, the ones I use in my my business specifically is online marketing, email marketing, in person, word of mouth, seasonal marketing, PR, event marketing. Um, you know, that there are definitely more, but I what I do okay so I know my target market and then I I create a marketing plan and I suggest you guys do too I'm a lover of the spider diagram put marketing plan in the middle and then shoot off and put social media what are you going to do on social media this year as a marketing plan what are you going to do this year for emails online emails you know promotions competitions um keeping in touch keeping people up to date what are you going to do what are you going to do for in person or events you know what what marketing are you going to do there seasonal promotions what are you going to do there are you going to have an easter special a portrait day or are you going to have autumn or christmas or you know it, it goes on and on but you need to create this marketing plan that is going to keep you in line and on track to target your target market. You must know exactly who before you can market to them because you need to find your voice and you need to work out how to be in their radar. So once you've created your profile and you've created your marketing plan, you then need to think, okay, so the high-end clients, they've started noticing me, right? So touch points. Some of you may know this, some of you may not, but touch points, they have to be consistent, right? These are, if, you're, if someone notices you, they're the right client, 
they look at your website, they look at your promotional materials, they look at your emails, and these all need to be consistent. They need to say high-end luxury. If there is a chink in the chain, they will lose trust that you are a high-end brand. So um, your fonts, your colors, you know, your stationery, your headed note paper, the portfolio that you are showing, you cannot have people in your portfolio that are not your target market your event stand, it might be down to the carpet that's on the floor or the rug or the lighting that's above your images. It all needs to say high-end luxury. Your sales tools, your albums need to be covered in the most beautiful leather. You know, you can't have a cheap album if you want to create a high-end luxury feel. Now, I'm not saying you need to spend tons of money um, to create this high-end feel, but you do need to pay attention to the details. Everything you do in your business, you need to say, does this feel like it is a luxury brand? You have to keep asking yourself that question. This email that I'm just about to send out, does it sound like it's coming from a luxury brand? You know, are you just saying, hey, Emma, thanks for your email. Yeah, I've got that. Speak soon. Bye. Or are you saying, you know, going into more detail, thank you so much for your email. That's really kind of you to spend the time sending me um, your ideas, blah, 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 you know, and on and on. And, and so every touch point has to be perfect. Visibility. You've got to be seen in the right places. You've got to get noticed. And people need to see you more than once. It might be at an event, and then they see you in a magazine. And then they have a word of mouth. Someone recommends you. And then maybe they see you at another event. And then maybe they see you online. Then they see your website. And it goes on and on and on until finally they, they think, OK, I trust this. I want to buy into this. I believe that my money is going to be well spent. So, um, you know, my biggest thing really is exhibiting my work. That's where I got most of my clients. I always found the right shows to showcase my work. Location was really important, both of the show and the actual stand itself. Um, I focus very much on the details. Um, so I, this, this topic of exhibiting, I could go on and on and on about. But what I want to say is that if you want to attract those high-end clients, you need to find the right place to show your work. Where are those people hanging out? What are they doing? Why are they going to look at your work and think, yep, yeah, that's for me? So you've got to think about your stand. You've got to think about your show offer, your portfolio. You're representing yourself as well at those shows. Now, do you look like a £5,000 photographer or have you turned up in your ripped jeans, trainers, and a hoodie? You know, it makes a difference because would you see someone in the Gucci shop wearing a hoodie and ripped jeans? You certainly wouldn't. Would you see one of the sales assistants sat down on a chair flicking through her phone? Absolutely not. You need to be, when you're representing you and your business, you need to do it to the highest, highest possible quality. So um, if you're going to exhibit your work, Think of the details. Keep that luxury brand in mind. Coll uh, collaborations. Um, collaborating with equine brands, connecting with influential people. You know, you may want to start local with your local equine businesses, but as you build confidence and knowledge, you can expand. You need to align yourself with trusted brands and trusted people. And then once they believe in you, then their clientele will also believe in you. And as long as you've targeted the right brands and the right influential people, then those people that follow those brands and people will be your clientele. So um, just before we carry on, I want you to type your top three words you want your business to be known for in the chat box. These words you will use for the year to keep you on track with your message. 
to your target market. Always refer to your words. So for example, a few years ago, my three words were luxury, sophisticated, and loved. And every piece of material, every marketing that I did, I said, does this feel like luxury? Does this feel sophisticated? And does it feel loved? Because I know my high-end clients want to feel loved. They want to feel cared for. They want to feel like they are my most important client. And so that's exactly how I make them feel. And on top of that, the whole process is sophisticated and it feels like a luxury experience. So I haven't got my chat box open, but I'm sure you guys are all furiously writing down your three words. But if you're not, take time, think about them, because these three words need to be stuck up next to your computer and you need to refer to them every time you are doing a piece of marketing. So systems and processes. I've just had a quick look at the time and I know we're, we're, we're quite well into the webinar and I've still got loads to say, so I'm gonna keep going. Right, systems and processes. So make sure once someone is a client and in the system, it's a seamless experience, okay? You've got your target market, you know how you're going to market to them. You've got all your touch points sorted. So anything they come into contact with, they are going to feel that this is a luxury brand. You're visible. Your visibility is high. You're in the right places. You're getting noticed by them. You're exhibiting. You're collaborating, okay? So you're making progress here. But if someone, and when someone does become a client, you need to make it easy for you and easy for them to feel cared for and loved, okay? You don't want anyone to get forgotten. So, for example, someone books you at a show. What is the process? OK, so you take their details down. You tell them you're going to phone them uh, two days after you get back from the show. OK, so you phone them, you book their shooting. Then, for example, the process might be they then get a confirmation email maybe a letter through the post if you want to make it extra special. They then get a welcome pack, maybe digitally or posted, who knows, whatever you fancy. Um, and then they get a phone call a couple of days before the shoot for a discussion about clothing, et cetera, et cetera. And then they have the shoot. And then maybe you send a thank you note. Maybe it's handwritten. Maybe it's an email. I don't know. You need to think about these processes. So they then receive that. They then get an email about their um, viewing. And when they want to book, they get a, maybe then a confirmation email. And then what happens at the end of the sale? The, their images are couriered to them. Are they sent with a bunch of flowers? Are they sent with a thank you note? Are they sent with a, something a little bit extra special? Maybe a little frame or, or a wallet size something. I, I don't know. You need to think about this. But the process, you need to think, booking, before shoot, during shoot, after the shoot, ordering, finalizing, the referral process, what happens to these clients once they're in the system, okay? Workflow is a big one. You need to be on top of your workflow. You need to know that if... Um, you're processing your images. How long is this going to take you? What software you're using? Um, you know, when when is your client going to uh, get to see their images? What bit of software are they going to be using for that? Um, you know, how long is this process going to take? How long does the ordering process take? What are you uh, promising your clients? You've got to work this all out before you're backing up. You know, how are you going to back up your images? properly to make sure that n none of them are lost. I know, guys, this is this list it feels horrendous if you're kind of starting out because there is so much to do. But actually, if you go through the processes, really break it down, keep asking yourself these questions and work through each bit so that you know you've got a real tight business, you will get there, I promise. Software, you need to know what are you using for your database software? What are you using for your processing software, your email marketing, um, your viewings, your products? You know, what bits of software do you need for which bit? And you need to sort this all out before you get these high end clients because once they're in the process, if you break down 
at any point in this link chain whatever if you if you have a glitch they lose trust in you and and then it all doesn't quite work out how you expected it to or hoped it would so you've got to make sure you know your suppliers you know what they can supply you know it's no good having a frame supplier that goes out of stock of something that you're showing your clients your album suppliers you need to make sure that they um do the highest quality products and you know you're not going to have a faulty album come through um your printers your tech support your couriers who are you using you know do you know that these guys are all highly trustworthy good companies to be working with so moving on to presentation mindset and growth you need to believe in yourself that you are a high-end photographer right if you don't believe that you can be one you're never going to be one but if you know that you can service these clients these high-end clients that can be i don't want to say demanding because actually in my experience most high-end clients aren't demanding at all they're, they're very grateful because uh they actually buy into you as the expert um but but you know there's another level of service that you have to give them and so you need to believe that you can do that so uh professionalism it's a huge thing and it's underrated as far as i'm concerned um you know you need to be knowledgeable you need to speak the language of your client you need to be the expert you certainly let no questions go unanswered you need to build trust they need to believe that you are the authority on this and you know exactly what you're doing the presentation like i said no ripped clothes no ripped jeans or dirty trainers you're presenting your business at the highest standard possible and present yourself at the highest standard possible. So you have to be the high-end photographer, maybe even before you are actually the high-end photographer, right? If you turn up to someone's yard and believe that you are a 5,000 pound photographer, then you're far more likely to pull it off than if you turn up to someone's yard thinking you can only make a hundred quid out of this shoot. So, there's a sort of saying, I don't know where it comes, it's the be, do, have. So you need to be it and do it to have it. So you need to be the 5,000 pound photographer, you need to do what a 5,000 pound photographer would do and then you can have that and you will be that. So um, like I said, these are kind of underestimated uh, how important they are, but um professionalism is at the top of my list along of course with mindset and you always need to ask yourself the question do i really want this do i really believe I, it can be me do i know that actually you know there are high-end photographers out there making lots of money and some of you right now will probably think, well, that can never be me. Why would it ever be me? I don't live in the right place. I don't have the right kit. I don't talk right, whatever it is. You're, you know, that demon in your head will be telling you, no, it's not you. You could never do that. And you have to totally push that aside because you need to believe that it really can be you. Why? Why not? Why can't it be you? You know, there's absolutely no reason. If you want it that bad, you absolutely can go and get it. Positivity is the top of my mindset always. I mean, I do have the odd laps, obviously, um, where I slip into this dark negative place <laughs> and decide I want a different job. But no, seriously, um, you know, you've got to believe in yourself and the conversations you have with yourself need to, you know, you've got to big yourself up. You, you know, you've got to be your own motivator. No one else is going to motivate you. It, it, this is a lonely job. And that's why I say having photographer friends is amazing because you all go through the same things. We all have lows and highs and, and the lows can seem horrible and like we just want to give up. But then what keeps us going? We are our own motivators and drivers. And, and if you're not going to do it for yourself, no one else will. So you've got to have that vision. 
go for it. It's hard. It will be tough. But why can't it be you? There is no reason. So I just like this. When life gets, gets blurry, adjust your focus. So we all know we have those days where we start to just think, oh, God, there's so much going on. I can't see the wood from the trees. You know, you just need to keep reassessing, asking yourself the important questions, adjust your focus and get back on track. So the shoot. Um, how do you make this, you know, special? These clients, they're used to high end quality brands, like nurturing them, loving them, giving them this special experience and thing that they can keep and love and have. And you need to build up trust. You need to build a relationship. And this is from the first moment you meet or the first moment you speak. You need to make them feel special. You need to make a fuss of their horse when you meet their horses you need to believe that you're creating beautiful images and you need to make them believe you're creating beautiful images you know i would say fake it till you make it absolutely you know if you believe you're going to be this high end photographer just be it even if you can't say that you've already had those high end clients you've got to believe that you are and and get them to believe it as well you know you need to be an authority uh, and this, can, you know, will come from experience and confidence, but you need to direct your shoots. You need to know what you want. You need to plan your shoots. You need to know your subjects. You need to stay calm under tricky situations. You need to always ensure that the client is happy and that the client is having fun. Don't ever let it be a chore for your client to be on a photo shoot. They need to fully be immersed in this experience that they think, oh my goodness, this is just wonderful. I want to tell my friends about this. I want to tell everyone about this. This is just amazing. Okay. So you need to prepare your clients. You need to go the extra mile. You need to make such a good impression and you need to do something different. You need to stand out to them. You need these hand touches. Um, I used to, <laughs> I obviously used to always take mints for the horses or sugar cubes or whatever, because if you can, you know, love someone's horse, they'll pretty much love you for loving their horse. Um, and, but I used to take cookies or donuts. I would, or stop a, a local bakery on the way and pick up some croissants or pastries or whatever. Um, you know, it might be that you take um, a couple of spare lead ropes just in case they haven't got any nice new looking ones. Um, you'll take in interesting distractions along for the horses to make the shoot easier for the client. And you just need to think, what can you do that's different, that makes you stand out, that ma will make them want to talk about you? So it's all about creating lasting memories okay it's all about the experience for the client they need to just love it they need to love it they need to feel loved they need to feel cared for they need to feel like they are your top client and so um, you need to work out sit down and really think how am I going to craft this experience for this client so that all they want to do is shout about my business in a good way of course so the sale, this is where photographers, you know, they get scared. They, they leave money on the table. They don't know quite what to do. It's vital that you get this right. So you've done the shoot and you've done the prep work. The clients have already had the price guides. They know what's on offer. This moment is where you know whether you're making a living or not this is like the bit that's exciting this is the fun bit and I know most photographers think no this is the scary bit this is like the bit where someone's going to turn around and tell me that my images are all awful and it's a complete personal attack on me and that I'm never going to survive because oh my goodness maybe someone won't like my images but it's it's so wrong this is the best bit 
because this is not a sales pitch. You've already done the selling. All you are doing now is holding your client's hand and helping them, guiding them to decide what images they want to keep forever and to make history. You know, these images that you're framing for them are going to stay in the family for years. So it's so important that you guys see the job through, okay? You don't leave money on the table and you just see this as a experience for your client to help them you know you're going to hold their hand through this experience where they're going to enjoy you know the, the, your clients have never done this before you have but it's got to feel high end okay so in person sales um this is how i would recommend um you there are different options for in-person sales. It doesn't necessarily have to be in in person. Uh, the majority of mine always have been, but there is, I know some of my um, training photographers at the moment are starting to do in-person bar through the computers, um, which is proving as well uh, very um, effective so there are different options but in person would be my recommended you've built up this trust and you don't want to break it now they need to still carry on this luxury feeling this luxury um, experience okay so the products they need to be beautiful they need to be in the best leather they need to be the best frames you need to show them what you want to sell to them okay mm -hmm. the experience is everything i'm just going to quickly look at the time oh yeah we're getting close sorry guys um so you you've they've never done this before and you have it's got to be fun for them most clients are buying from an emotional place okay they're loving the images and they want them and and so they're purchasing with their emotions okay but you need to take your time it comes back to this professionalism you're not pushing them into a sale you're not forcing them to um buy stuff and you're not sat there just wanting to take their money you are actually wanting to really guide them and help them and get the right images for them and their life and the clothes, it's very important that you get this right. You've got to make sure that everyone, everything's tight. So your order form, they need to sign it. You need to offer payment options. How do most people want to pay? Either by card or online transfer. And you need to give these um, as options, okay? So you've got to make sure that you go the whole way. Don't stop at the end of the shoot. You've got to see the sale through going that extra mile. So what is going to make you stand out so that high end clients recommend you? And it's all these extra points. You're connecting with people, you know, as soon as they um, book with you, you want to show them that you care. You want to, I've said it a few times tonight, you want to make them feel special. Be a friend, but always be professional. Think about those hand touches. How are you going to make this not just average, but really step up your game? You know, you want these people to become raving fans. You want them to recommend you. You want them to go into that circle of love. The experience is what it's all about. I mean, you need to read your clients. You need to follow all the signs. You need to encourage and inspire them. And you certainly need to make an experience they will never forget, something they would repeat. And I know that many clients purchase originally and go, it's a once in a lifetime thing. You know, this is going to be so special. This is, you know, we'll only ever do this once. And then actually they go through the experience and they book me again the following year or a couple of years later, because actually the experience was so unforgettable that they want to do it all again. And the follow up is so important. You know, once a client has spent money with you, they can be a client for life. And that, you know, some of my clients have spent thousands and thousands over the course of 10, even 12, 13, 14 years um, because I've continued to nurture the relationship. OK, so inhale confidence, exhale doubt. 
I'm sure, and I know this because I've been through all of this, and sometimes I still do. Sometimes I, I lack confidence. Actually, just before this webinar, I needed to inhale some confidence and exhale some doubts. Will people like what I say? Will they get, you know, be able to take away great stuff to implement in their business? And, you know, inhaling confidence exhaling doubt just keeps me on top of those silly little niggling you know voice in your head so take, take a deep breath you guys absolutely can do this so I know that is actually a ridiculous amount of content and I know I've said so much and and tried to um you know, pack it in, but I've tried to give you as broad as I can so that you guys have got a lot to work with. I want you to really write up these notes, look at all the stuff I've said, start asking yourselves the questions. But you know, I just wanted to remind you that you showed up because you are ready for the next step. You want to upgrade your photography business and you just maybe haven't been sure where to start or you haven't got all your ducks lined in a row. Now, it might be that some of you have heard some of this stuff before, but maybe you were missing three or four bits and now you've got the, those bits you can work on that are just the missing links in the chain. So um, I know you're all thinking, I mean, how can I get this all work done quickly? You know, I want it now. I want these high-end clients now. I want to start making loads of money. Um, and basically, this is where, you know, you've got two options. You can do it the hard way. You can do it the easy way. And this is what I'm, I'm just going to tell you about the Training Barn one-year mentoring program. Um, for photographers that are ready for the next step. This is basically, I'm super proud of it. It's gonna be an incredible course. Um, Hannah and I have put together the content over the course of a year. And basically we are gonna be hand holding a group of 12 photographers right through from you know, the very start of their business, even if you're not at the start of your business, from the start of your business, right through to you making that huge leap into being a high-end photographer with high-end clients and a profitable business. So basically, in a nutshell, this is the step-by-step -step course to build your equine photography business beyond your wildest dreams by attracting the perfectly targeted clients every single day without the confusion and overwhelm of doing it alone. So I'm just going to quickly tell you what's included. I'm not going to take up much of your time, I promise, before we get on to the questions and answers section. So it's 12 days together, um, all, all together over the course of the year. And we're going to focus on photography and your creativity. We're going to push your creative boundaries beyond your comfort zone. You're going to progress further than you ever thought possible. We've got multiple horses, models, locations. Um, myself and Hannah is gonna, are going to guide you all the way through. So your portfolio is incredible. Um, you know, you'll be meeting and networking with high-end clients. The business side, you know, we will get your business ticking like a well-oiled machine. You'll be confident and secure in the knowledge you have to run a profitable, successful business. OK, and there are absolutely tons of bonuses. You will have unlimited access to me and Hannah all year round. You'll have a very tight knit support group of like minded photographers all going through the same process. We'll have extra online trainings. Um, We'll have behind the scenes access to many top suppliers for your business. You'll have scripts of the letters we send to our clients, the emails, the documents, everything that goes on behind the scenes, you will have access to. But the list goes on and on and on. But the results will speak for themselves. You'll own a photography business that you are proud of and one that will be creating the career you dreamed of. You'll have focus and direction. You'll be confident and knowledgeable, attracting only the highest end clients day in, day out, all whilst being supported by myself and Hannah. So um, you're probably thinking, well, how much does it cost? Of course, 
um, we get to that point, it's £475 per month. And I know some of you will think, oh my goodness, you know, that sounds steep, but I can promise you uh, we will take you from where you are to another different level. Um, you know, the way I like to look at it um, is, you know, if you had to make an extra £470 a month now, how would you do it? Would it be by doing one more shoot? Would it be by doing two more shoots? If you really want to make this uh, your year, the year to really step up and go forward and, and change your business, then maybe instead of trying to find the £475, why don't you just try and make it extra every month so that you can come on board? So um, if you're interested in applying to join the course, I would say there are only a handful of spaces left, le uh, less than that in actual fact. There's a few spaces left. Um, if you, Hannah's going to post the link in the chat box now. You can go in and fill the application form. Or if you want to see more details and the dates, um, then you can go to the Training Barn website. Uh, so if you are interested, go over there now because I am pretty certain that by tomorrow we will have filled the last spots. So um, I just wanted to leave this last testimonial that I got a few years ago from a lovely lady, Leslie Bliss. Um, she said, I first met Emily in my capacity as a journalist when I interviewed her for an article in 2011 about photographing horses. At that time, I was working as a writer, taking photographs to illustrate my specialist dressage features, earning 10 pounds an image. Thanks to Emily's mentoring, my images have improved beyond recognition and I now, now own a viable photography business. During my journey, I've met many incredible, talented photographers and what strikes me is that few of those are commercially successful. In my second year, I had a shoot spend of more than £2,000, something I've been told many photographers never achieve and that's all down to Emily's guidance through her extensive experience and remarkable business acumen. I can't thank her enough. So guys, we are on to the Q&A and I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. I'm really sorry, the time, I'm four minutes over an hour, so hopefully that's not too bad. But um, maybe you guys have got some questions for me. So I am going to ask Hannah. Hi everyone. Hi Hannah. Hi. Have you got many questions? We've got loads of questions. So I've been going through all the questions and trying to put them in uh, some sort of order. So I do hope we can cover as many as possible. Um, I've also had some lovely comments from people saying, don't worry about the time. We are here to stay. Oh, um, wow. So that's <laughs> lovely. Thanks, guys. That's really nice. Um, so, OK, I'm going to start with a question from Ruth, who actually sent this um, question through yesterday. So she was being super prepared for the webinar she asked if you don't have a studio you can invite your clients to for the viewings or the clients live quite far away and it would be too time consuming and costly to travel to them again for the viewing what would you suggest to still maximize potential sales okay so like I said there are lots of different options and uh, the, the one option that I would just completely and utterly rule out is sending images online, um, you know, just either in a web gallery on your website or sending proofs in the post. In my experience, that does not work. Um, of course, my preferred method is have my clients travel back down to me. Uh, so I travel to them to do the shoot. They travel to me to do the viewing be it in a studio or I know photographers that rent out a space either in a nice five-star hotel or and sometimes the hotels they will uh they'll allow you some space if you say you're definitely um order dinner and drinks or something like that so um you know, th think you, you could possibly do that and you could possibly meet halfway if the client's very far away. Maybe you find a, a mutual, mutually agreeable uh, location that you could meet up. But I did also touch on the point that some of my clients are starting to do the viewing, um, but 
by sharing their computer screen with them. So the only caveat to this is that you really need to prepare your client well. So the, what, the reason why it works in person when they come to the studio is because they have a dedicated, say, two hours to sit and look through uh, images. Life doesn't get in the way because they are in your space, uh, you know, going through this experience with you. But so what you what you must do is is prepare your clients if you were going to do it through the computer you go through exactly the same process they would have need to have seen the sales products before probably at the shoot um but you need to go through the same process and make sure that you know like i told you guys shut the door turn your phones off and really concentrate. Okay, maybe not in those words, but what you wanna say is, look, this is a sacred time, two hours we're gonna give ourselves, you know, for, for you to go through and pick your images. And you would put boundaries around that to ensure that you're still gonna get a good sale. Um, so that there are options, there are different ways to do it. And it just really depends on your circumstances and how you can, um, really like you say get the maximum from from those sales good excellent um and another one from ruth how many different frame sizes types and colors and mounts do you offer and how do you make sure that what your client has chosen will work best for the image um okay so the first bit um i keep my price guide very simple uh yeah. roughly do three sizes small medium and large um and i keep my frame options down uh, to be honest there's pro out of the 10 frame samples that i have probably only three frames ever sell you know a black one a wood one and a maybe a vintagey type one for the people that want something a bit different uh so keep it really simple like pair it back as much as you can and then i've just forgotten what was the end bit of the question what can you how do you make sure what the client has chosen will work best for the image um yeah so usually clients will at some point go oh what do you think emily and i pretty much recommend to go with a plain black frame, unobtrusive, um, you know, I say to them, so as you know, if you move house and your decor changes, it, it's not really going to affect the frame and where you hang it. Um, yeah, I think, I think most, you know, if a client wants to go crazy and have some crazy frame, then that's fine. You know, they're prepared to pay for it and, and that's great. Um, but if they ask me, I'd usually say plain back, black because I just want the image to, to stand on its own. Good. Um, quite an interesting question here from Chris. Would you recommend sole trader or limited company? Uh, okay, so I have always been a sole trader. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do know some photographers that are limited companies. I would say I'm not entirely sure of the reasons and you'd need to ask your accountant because I have asked my accountant before and they've said to me, you know, it's not going to make much difference or whatever at the minute. And the guys that I do know that are limited companies, they tend to be working as a partnership. So uh, they, you know, their wife or whatever works in the company and yeah. she, for example, is the company secretary. And so there's a salary paid and, you know, uh, um, so I think it's definitely best to ask your accountant on that one. But, <laughs> but you know, I, I am a sole trader. Very good. Um, just had a lovely comment earlier from Sam, which I just wanted to tell you, um, which was, wish I could write shorthand, um, which I thought was lovely. And I've oh, reminded, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm reminded so Sam that we are going to be sending out the full recording of this webinar to everyone who registered tomorrow. So if your hand is burning, um, <laughs> don't worry, you can come back and uh, go through this all again and really get all the nuggets uh, from this evening. So next question. Now, I'm sh sorry if I say this brand wrong because I'm not great at this one, but do you have any suggestions how to successfully collaborate with local equine brands? I have found a local business that wants to collaborate with me, but I do not know what to specifically do with them. 
She sells Lemure products. Oh, okay. So there's, yeah, there's lots of different things you can do with collaborations. So, um, uh, for example, where to start on this one? Because there's yeah. loads. Um, okay, so if, for example, it was a local tax shop, um, you may want to. There's options here. Okay, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this this is a huge question. Yeah, uh, sorry. Okay. No, 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 that's okay. So um, gift vouchers, maybe that the shop are happy to have beautiful gift boxes that they sell in the shop, full stop, here's a gift, buy a photo shoot for your beautiful daughter's birthday or something. Um, it might be that uh, they run a competition on a uh, quarterly basis where their, their, their clients, their database goes into a free prize draw to win a photo shoot with you. Now, um, depending on what business you're working with and, and how you want to gear your business up and, and what the clientele are like and everything, um, but you can maybe target the higher spenders. So it might be that the owner of the tax shop um, will agree that they will say on a quarterly basis, they would give their top two spending clients that quarter a photo shoot from you and it might include something uh, but they go into that process you're targeting the right client right if if someone <laughs> let's put it this way if, if someone's the highest spender in a quarter at a tax shop they're spending a lot of money because I know that on average I don't spend that much in a tax shop but I spend a lot in a tax shop because they're expensive places to be. And so if, if that client is spending a lot and they're winning a photo shoot with you, the chances are they are bang on uh, your target market. Um, if, for example, you were working with a horse physio, it may be that, um, again, her top three clients, she might gift them a photo shoot. Now, anyone having physiotherapy on their horse, you know, again, that's a luxury product for a horse and owner to have, a physio coming and working on your horse. So, again, that could be uh, your right target market. Um, you know, what hopefully those few little nuggets there will just help you start to think a little bit sideways. What can you do? Can you run competitions with them? Can you think about gift vouchers? Can you think about giveaways? Could you run a competition with them? So mm. actually, could they get their clients to enter some kind of photo competition where you then be the judge of the the photographs or you know of their horses or whatever and and then someone win so just think sit down and think okay what does this person do what is their client who are their clientele what does their list look like and then what have a, a bit of a brainstorm come up with three or four different ideas and then take that to the person and say look this is what I've been thinking what do you think Great answer, Emily. And I think um, Flo has sent a message saying sorry <laughs> for that long question. But I oh. think Flo's probably got a lot of uh, content there, a lot of actionable um, points that she can run with now. So that's Good. great. Um, really nice question and something that we do get asked quite often. And it, the question does ask might sound silly, but it's not. What calendar would you recommend? And Emily and oh. I use different calendars. So, <laughs> yeah. OK, so. Um, I use a combination of Google Calendar and a paper calendar. Uh, for me, I use Google Calendar on monthly view and it stresses me out like <laughs> nothing on earth because all I can see is a billion things to do every month. Um, and so I also use my paper diary where every Sunday I write up my coming week and then I look at that on a day-to-day -day basis. But because of the sort of person I am and the way I like to plan, I like to have my Google Calendar. I feel like if I lost my paper calendar, that would be a complete disaster. So I double up on that. Great, good. Um, good question here. How do you make an experience unforgettable? <laughs> oh, well, you know, ourselves. 
Yeah, it's it's um, the extra points, the touch points, the um, you know how you make someone feel. You know, um, we all remember experiences over things, right? So, um, what do you do differently? Is it the way? Is it you know? I've met a handful of people who um, I can say that when I met them, I felt like I had known them forever because there was something about the way they communicated with me that made me feel special. And you need to, you need to think, what can I do that is going to make people talk about me? How is this going to become unforgettable? And I know I'm, I'm being a little bit like uh, fluffy about this because it, I can't really say to you, yeah, turn up with a bag of donuts and that will do it because that's <laughs> not the case. Um, you need to, it's a whole process. I, yeah. you know, the, everything we've talked about tonight from start to finish, it has to be special. You know, it might be the handwritten notes. It might be the donuts. It might be the polo mints. It might be that extra image that you sent them that they didn't realize they were going to get through the post. It yeah. might be, it could, it can be so many different things, but you need to think if you've ever experienced a luxury brand, what did they do? You bought a really nice handbag and actually inside it was this little note tag and it said something really special on it, you know, and that changed the feeling of yeah. what the experience was. And so um, it's very difficult to, to give you a, to, you know do that but you need to work it out and see what feels right for you because if I said to you you know if you hug every one of your clients maybe you're not the hugging type but there are people that are real huggers and <laughs> and they're the people that I remember and, and that made me feel special but but you know if you're not a hugging sort of person then that's not going to be right for you and your clients but um you need mm. to kind of work it out um Sorry. Plus, people love talking about their horse. It's like yeah. it's like parents and children. Every horse owner adores talking about their horse. So even just listening sometimes, yeah, yeah. and asking the right questions, I found yeah. has been a, a loving real... their horse is always a good one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to cut some of these down because we have got, I think, 131 questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't think we can keep Emily here for another hour and a half as much as we would <laughs> like to. Um, so I, there's a, there's a three or four questions that are basically the same. Emily, how do you show your images from the shoot? Are you using a projector on the computer? Is it on an iPad? So it's a great question. Yeah, so in my studio, I have a projector and it goes from my laptop into the projector however yep. that magic happens and they view <laughs> them quite large on on a big projector yeah perfect good um and another question did you say you take a deposit at the time of choosing their images that's a really good question uh no so they book they book the shoot uh, so there's a shoot fee and then when they have their viewing they order their images and depending on how big the balance is, um, uh, if they said, I would usually say, how would you like to pay? And they will, now some clients say, do I have to pay the whole lot now? And that question signifies to me that they would rather pay a deposit of some kind. So I would say, no, you don't have to pay it all now, but it would be 50% now and then 50% on collection of your images. Okay, so some clients will pay the whole lot up front. Some clients pay 50% um, just to confirm the book, it, uh, the order, and then 50% on uh, collection. Very good. Um, interesting. What, in your opinion, is the most effective method of marketing when you're stepping up in your business and pricing? You're stepping up in your business and pricing. Um, it, it is shows. It has to yeah. be exhibiting your work at shows, at key shows where you know your target market are going to be um, there and, and they're, they're going to be there maybe one, two, three days. And if you can be exhibiting your work, you, you know, these equine shows, 
you've got maybe thousands of your target client walking past your stand and hopefully in on into your stand over the course of a couple of days it has to be the best place uh, in my mind that's you know where it's at perfect and i'm going to go with one more question because we are 22 minutes after um what is the one camera and lens that you have been using for so long as you mentioned earlier what is this camera and lens <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> For the majority of the 15 years, it's been a Nikon um, and a 70 to 200 mil lens. Um, I have obviously updated the Nikon like after five years or four or five years or whatever uh, to be like the latest uh, camera. Um, mm -hmm. But nowadays I upgraded to a nice medium format Leica. And, <laughs> uh, my, my business bought me that for my 30th birthday. I thought I'd worked hard enough. So um, <laughs> I shoot on that and now a 70 mil prime lens. Perfect. And I just want to thank everyone else for sending in your questions. Um, we will actually try and get through some of those questions, um, maybe via an email, we'll send out a newsletter to all the registrants and we'll try and cover some of those later questions in there. Um, I just wanted to also read out some of the amazing three words that you guys added oh, to the cool. chat bar. Um, we've got quality, reliability, service, successful, exquisite, rich, professional, stylish, extraordinary, artistic, unique, friendly, trusted. I think all of these words, you guys should write these down and have them in front of you all the time and remember that that is what you're striving to be. So yeah, really well done. Amazing. And, and if you can use those words to really get your voice clear so that exquisite, I love that word, mm. um, you know, everything you're doing is your website exquisite is the way you shoot exquisite you know think about it in every touch point of your business are you exquisite and if you're not then make it exquisite oh that's brilliant i love those and also um one other that's just come through first choice oh that's nice. brilliant yeah i love that yeah really good um and having loads of people thank you emily on the um on the chat here they've they're just saying they've got so much from it. Um, Sam agrees with you. If, he, if she left, if she lost her paper diary, she'd freak out too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Lovely. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. You know, we will be doing more webinars. I absolutely love doing them. And um, I hope you guys can all go and put your brains into gear tomorrow and get, get some of this... Um, content out and on the paper and, and working for you in your business and I look forward to hearing from anyone that's interested in the one year course and I'll see you guys soon take care bye everyone bye bye, bye.